Hello. What I'd like to do today is talk a bit about CCDs themselves. Uh, CCDs obviously have been really important for astrophotography over the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, most of the really great images of the night sky have been taken with CCD sensor technology. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the sensors themselves. Uh, hopefully this will be uh, this will be informative, it may be entertaining, and uh, it's probably not going to be particularly useful in terms of helping you take a picture of the night sky, but just when you kind of want to have an idea of what's actually happening on the camera itself, it, it might be useful. Okay, so this is a, a sensor. It's actually one of the Kodak 11 megapixel sensors, and it looks similar to some of the Sony sensors, in as much as that we have a, a clear piece of cover glass covering a piece of silicon chip itself, and we have a number of pins along the side, or it can be a pin grid array, to actually communicate with electronics outside. So the first thing to actually know is actually it's a piece of silicon. So why on earth have we got a piece of silicon chip under there? What's what is uh, why have we chosen to use that? Why have we why haven't we chosen to use a piece of steel or a piece of coal or plastic? Why silicon? Uh, and the answer really comes down is a very interesting property of silicon, and to kind of talk you through that, it's useful to talk about a number of different uh, types of compound and their electronic properties. Okay, so an insulator is a material where all the electrons are in the valence band. So they're bound closely to the parent atoms and they can't move a lot, move around the material at all. Electrons that are delocalized that can move are what's called in the conductance band. Insulators do have a conductance band, but their energy is so much higher than the valence band that it's very, very seldom that an electron will get promoted into the conductance band and then it'll tend to fall straight back to its parent atom and be bound. So insulators are very poor at conducting electricity. Metals, we have the converse situation where the valence band and conductance band energies actually overlap. So we have this sea of delocalized electrons within the metal and that helps it to uh, conduct electricity. And that can do that without actually adding any energy to, into the metal itself. Uh, our third type of material, the semiconductor, has this interesting property where the valence band is only slightly, or the conductance band is only slightly above the valence band, so we have to add a relatively small amount of energy in order to promote electrons into the valence band. Uh, for silicon, that energy is 1.14 electron volts, uh, and the interesting property there is that corresponds to the amount of energy that a photon has between 300 and 1000 nanometers. Uh, that energy uh, can be used, so if a photon falls into silicon, then it can be used to actually promote a electron uh, to, the, uh, to the conductance band. And there, once it's in the conductance band, we can then move it around the silicon and measure it. Okay, so now I'd like to consider uh, how we actually design a image sensor around a piece of silicon chip. So here I've just got on screen representing just a square piece of silicon. Uh, I'm going to try and chop this up now into nine areas, which become nine pixels. First thing to do is to separate the columns. So we put these stops in between the columns, and these are basically little electrodes that run across the surface of the chip, and they carry a negative charge, or we give them a negative potential. And it stops any electrons that form within these three different areas now from migrating left and right across the sensor. So that's constrained them left and right. We also need to constrain them up and down. And we use these vertical clocks in order to do this. So here they're running in groups of three, so three clocks per pixel. And at the moment I've got the middle one with a positive potential and the two outside ones with a negative potential. So what happens now is if a photon was to fall onto one of these pixels, it's gonna generate and liberate an electron. And that electron is going to want to move and so it's underneath the positive uh, potential of the positive clock. Uh, so this is the way it accumulates, uh, accumulates an image. So during the exposure time we have photons falling on the image sensor and they're constrained within the pixel by the vertical electrodes and the, uh, these horizontal running uh, vertical clocks. Then we want to read out that image, 
The way we do it is by actually clocking those vertical clocks. So now if we move the, uh, the potential, the clocks down one, so the potential, positive potential has moved down one clock. It tends to do then is to move or, or ask the electrons to migrate uh, one stage at a time. And again, we do it again by moving the positive phase down one and the electrons slowly migrate down the CCD itself. Uh, we carry on doing this until the electrons or the pixel will transfer into the bottom stage, which is this horizontal readout register. Uh, exactly the same kind of thing, but this time the uh, the clocks themselves are running vertically and so they allow us to move the electrons left to right. So in this case we're moving them over towards the left uh, into the final stage and once they're in that stage we're using an amplifier and the amplifier basically measures the number of photons that we used to be in the pixel and converts it into a voltage. And that voltage then appears as on one of the pins on this chip itself. So I think it's on this one, it's one from the end. Yes, one size vertical, one size horizontal clocks. Uh, then when we've finished measuring that, measuring or digitizing that particular voltage from that pixel, we use the switch in the, uh, uh, in the output stage to clear all the charge away from that pixel and clock one more of the horizontal uh, horizontal registers into the output gate. So it's a very it's a very typical system to read out a CCD is first of all one line at a time into the horizontal readout register and then moving that one pixel at a time into the output stage. And this describes really what is a very classic area sensor for the for the CCD. It's, it's quite an old technology, quite an old way of uh, handling or using silicon to uh, Come and image it. It does need a mechanical shutter, so during the readout stage, the whole thing is still sensitive to light. So, in order that when you start to move the image down the sensor, you don't get trailing, you do need to use a mechanical shutter. Uh, all of the sensors on this particular tray uh, are not aero sensors, actually, all interline sensors. Uh, a lot of our products within the attic range use interline sensors that don't need mechanical shutters. Uh, so, it's probably worthwhile just touching on how we how we go about using those. So if we start off with exactly the same piece of silicon again, um, and this time I'm going to make it into this uh, interline sensor. First thing to do is really just to start by making the same uh, same aerotype sensor. So we'll again, I haven't shown them here, but we'll introduce these vertical column stops to stop the electrons migrating left and right. And we'll have the vertical clocks as well, so it allows to move charge up and down the pixel itself. Where things get different is we put these bands of aluminium on top of the sensor itself. Uh, these basically make the area underneath the aluminium light shield insensitive to light. So during the readout phase, if there's any photons or any electrons sorry, within that part of the readout register, as they're being moved down the column, we don't have to worry about that part of the sensor becoming picking up further photons and converting them into electrons there's this light shield on top of them. So we also now need a something to actually be sensitive to light. In this case, it's called a photodiode. Exactly the same idea, it's a piece of silicon. Uh, so we've got a couple of other clocks we can now control this, use to control this photodiode. One of them we can use to clear the charge from all the photodiodes in one go, and that's typically used at the start of an exposure. And the second is a clock that will move the charge from all the photodiodes over towards the uh, left here, and that will then basically move them underneath the aluminium light shields and will effectively end the exposure. Uh, so this is yes, yeah, especially a, a diagram of what a interline sensor looks like. So we've now got a photodiode and we've got the vertical readout CCD underneath a aluminium light shield. Uh, where this isn't very good is now what we've done is we've made the area of the sensor itself that's sensitive to light. That's only about 25% of the actual surface of the chip. Uh, we describe that as having a fill factor of around 25%, which is pretty bad if we're looking at a low light source because 75% of the photons falling on that sensor aren't going to be converted into electrons. So here's where things get clever again. That's the chip manufacturers introduce this microlens technology 
So on top of each photodiode, we put this lens, or they put the lens on top, which means any photons now falling on top of the lens get concentrated on top of that photodiode itself. And that will then improve the fill factor up beyond 80%. The technology they use to actually produce these very, very tiny lenses uh, has been through a lot of development. It's, it's relatively interesting in itself. Uh, it's usually a, uh, an inkjet type process where these little uh, lenses are spotted one at a time onto the sensor surface. Uh, but then they take up more of a round spherical kind of uh, uh, shape when you do that. So then to actually get them back into a lens shape, the chip is controlled through some very careful temperature gradients to get the, these balls to sag into the shape of the lens. And once they've done that, then the, the fill factors effectively go up because of the micro lensing. Okay, uh, that's, I think that's given as much as I probably want to talk about in this, uh, this little section on CCDs. Uh, I hope it's been interesting uh, and maybe next time you're out imaging the skies as well as pondering the intricacies of galaxies and nebulae, we can also start to think a little bit about what's going on actually on the sensor surface. Thank you.